course, Rosie. A big shout out to IBN.TV. Thank you for having us on. And Bella, I like hosting with you. Oh, do you now? Yeah, I kind of do. Thank you. Well, guys, a very, very warm welcome to our show. I hope that you are staying, staying, whoo, staying safe and sanitized. Um, it's crazy in the world right now. Well, it's not that crazy if you just stay at home and don't go on social media or watch anything or read anything. Then it's just like being at home. Sure. Um, so, Rosie, you remember a couple of weeks ago um, we had that guy on and he, like, explained time zones you're the really smart guy i remember we called him the other scientist he was really smart right really smart in fact guys he inspired us to start a new series that's right i think we should play it right yeah 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 it's maths and grandma 101 oh, let's play it Rosie is my puppet pal. Her hair is straight and yellow. Are we a dress? A single hue? And we both say hello. Hey guys, and welcome to Maths and Grammar 101. Making counting and spelling super fun. With Isabella J and, and guys and welcome to Maths and Grammar 101 and we're so excited to be having you here. Bella? Yes Rosie? Are you sure you're ready for this? I am so ready but I am so curious as to why why you're asking. Well you know it's Maths and Grammar. And your point is? It's Maths and Grammar. We left this behind us when we left school. No, Rosie, we took it out of school. And I mean, we've used stuff like square roots and, and bod mass and multiplication so much in our lives since school. Okay, if you say so. But Stella. Yes, Rose. What is bod mass? Bod mass? B O D M A S, bod mass? Yeah, Bella, bod mass. Well, that's something you learned in school. No. It's something you learn at the gym. What do you mean at the gym? You know, when a personal trainer measures your body mass. Not body mass, bod mass. Yes, hot dod mass. Oh, Rosie, no, this is a mass thing. Oh, what does it mean? Bod mass. Brackets, others, division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. Nailed it. You really did. But what does it mean? <laughs> well, Rosie, this is a simple math trick. Okay, how is it a trick, Bella? Well, 3 plus 6 times 2. 15. No, 18. No, it's 15. Well, it could be 18. What do you mean it could be? Well, 3 plus 6 times 2 can have two answers. That doesn't make any sense. Well, if we know the bod mass rule, then it does make a little bit of sense. Oh, how does it apply to this? Well, let's look at our first maths number. Three plus six times two. Yeah? We would be doing the times first. Why? Well, in bod mass, brackets, other, division, Multiplication comes before addition. Exactly, so the times comes before the plus. So then first we work out six times two. Exactly, and what is that? I don't know. Six times two equals 12. So you simply double the six. Okay, and then, then we want to do the plus, the addition, which comes last in bod mass rule. Let me go three plus, what was our answer? 12. So three plus 12 equals? Not 12. 15. That was my answer. Exactly, but now let's look at the second one. Bracket three plus six, bracket times two. 
Well, it's the same, so it's 15. No, it's not the same. You see, this this is the trick. Bodmas. What does the B stand for? The brackets. So, shouldn't we work out what's inside the brackets first, since that's first in the Bodmas rule? Well, I think so. So, what is that? 3 plus 6. And what does 3 plus 6 equal? 9. Yes, 9. There we go. So it's a 9 times 2. Not 9. What's that? 9 doubled. I don't know. 18. 18! So when we apply the bod mass rule, we can get so many different answers with the same numbers and the same order, just with or without the brackets. That's really clever. So we must always remember brackets are the division, multiplication, addition, and then subtraction. Exactly. And remember, division is divide. Multiply is times, addition is plus, and subtraction is minus. Okay. And that all stands for? Dodness. Hot dodness. Not hot bodmass, just, just, just bodmass. Oh, Alright. So, so I like this. But Bella. Yes. Our program is called Maths and Grammar 101. Yeah. So what about the grammar in this lesson? Well, we're going to get there. I thought we'd kick us off with one of my pet peeves. Because that's a fantastic place to start, isn't it? It is. To get it off your chest. Yes. There, there, and there. There, there, there. No, it's three different words. No, Bella, you just said there, there, there. But three different words entirely. But they sound the same. Well, when words sound the same, but are different things, that's called a homophone. A homophone? All right, so the T-H-E-R-E, the. -E -E. So what does that mean? The. It's the. Exactly. T-H-E-R-E -E means, oh, look over there. That's the meaning of that word. And then let's look at T-H-E-R-E. E I R. There. No, it's not there. It's a different thing, Rosie. That means, oh, look at their dog. Oh, it's so cute. It is cute. Or, or look at their pants, their shoes. It's that's what there is. So it belongs to someone. Exactly. So look over there. T H E R E. And see what pants they're wearing. No, then that's a different thing. T H E Y apostrophe R E. There, which is short for they are. So that's what the apostrophe is for. It replaces the space and the A. Yes, Rosie, but it sounds quite similar to there and there. But it's not there and there because it's there. Exactly. But they're doing something wrong. Which one is that? T-H-E-Y apostrophe R-E. And what's the clue? Well, it's like they are doing something wrong. That's a really good way of remembering it, Rosie. And look over there. Where? Where is spelled the same as there, just with a W instead of a T. Oh, that's a fantastic way of, of explaining it, Della. And there? Which there? Oh, this is just a nightmare. Anyways, I'm sure you guys have got the gist of it now. I'm sure that they do. So, guys, you have just been watching Maths and Grammar 101, making counting and spelling super fun with Isabella Jane and Rosie.
are wearing a butt. Yeah, because then you won't put your butt. Well, if you do put your butt on in the morning, you don't have to worry about getting your, your mask because you just pull it up. That's my face. Yeah, I literally got the face on my face. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so guys, um, we've got a really, really cool guest. We've spoken about him. We have spoken to him. We want to now speak with him. We have got none other than the Adelis Scientist. <laughs> <laughs> How are you guys? We're good, aren't we? Good? Yeah, we're good. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you. I was yeah. really, really impressed with your math and grammar show. I love it. Really? Did, did we get all the things right? You did indeed. And it's surprising how many adults don't even know the botmas rule. So I'm so happy that you guys teach that to everybody. Well, you know what? It doesn't just come from the genius over here. <laughs> no, no, no. It actually, for those of you watching, Carl taught me maths in school. So... Y'all love math and grammar hacks. It's basically thanks to Carl. So <laughs> I'm so happy to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, I want to have you on my show all the time because I feel like you talk about important things like time zones. I didn't know what those were until you told me. <laughs> and I think that's a very nice way of explaining things. Yeah, he does. <laughs> I, just, I just want to know some stuff. I was wondering, you know, about the planet. How we can look after it better, you know? It is such an important thing, Rosie. Um, and there are so many things that we have to look at. So we need about, I think, five days <laughs> of discussing everything. But there are small things that we have on a daily basis that all of us can do, like single-use plastics, for example, which is a big, big issue. And not many people realize how deep the problem really goes and how many people, as well as animals, as well as the physical environment, is damaged by the use of single plastics. So that's something yeah. that's, that's, that's a major thing that everybody does on a daily basis that you can start with. Absolutely. And Carl, can you define single-use plastic? You know, for the students. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so single-use plastics are all of the types of plastics that you literally just use one single time and then you throw it away. So <laughs> the biggest... Exactly. So the biggest ones that we have on a general basis are plastic straws that everybody uses. Um, you are uh, eating utensils for takeaways, for example, and then I think the biggest, baddest one of them all the shopping bags that you get when you go and do your grocery shopping. So, those yeah. are those are the main ones, and, and it's ridiculous if we look at the numbers. Um, it's estimated the uh, average family uses a thousand five hundred plastic bags per year for just for their general shopping. And, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's a big problem because what do we do? We use it for, what, maybe 10 minutes and then we throw it away. And it takes up to 500 years to degrade. And then it doesn't go away either because when it degrades, it just forms smaller little microplastics that doesn't go away at all. And these microplastics are also toxins, so they keep on polluting the environment. Yeah. Sure. So, so something that someone threw away 500 years ago, it's still just chilling there. It's still just chilling there, just in very small pieces. Yeah. So it's a big problem. And then what happens, or the, the, the biggest concern is what do we do with it? Because we, if we put it in a landfill site where we put all our other rubbish, the microplastics eventually end up in the groundwater. It ends up in, in the water sources around it. And some evidence from really smart scientists actually shows that it ends up in our tap water that we drink. Um, so we don't really know yet how badly it's going to affect our, our health, but it, the research has shown that, it's, that it has influences on hormones that control how fast and how you grow and develop, for example. So all of these things, and this is in our daily drinking water, and we have to drink water daily. So now we're starting to contaminate our water sources, which now becomes a human problem as well for those yeah. people who don't really care about the environment as such. It does now influence the human health. So it's a big problem. 
Yeah, I remember um, when I was younger watching the Pixar film Wally. Oh, Wally! And <laughs> how how hectic that is, like basically not even being able to live on the planet within however many years, and it's, it's scary. To think it's, it's possible it is. can actually happen it, with you now. It can we, we could be drinking it. We could be drinking our own waste as human beings. Nice. It's it's getting to the point where we're running out of space. Yeah. Sorry, say that again, Rosie. Well, I'm glad that I don't drink. <laughs> yeah, and you've got the advantage there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Single-use plastics. I think we can talk about shopping bags. It is a massive thing. It's a universal thing too. Um, I know that some places are doing paper bags, which is obviously a little bit better, but what are some ways that we can, just small changes that we as individuals can make when it comes to single-use plastics? Because some things you can't get away from, like packaging for a new toothbrush. It is difficult. It really is. Um, I think the biggest thing, because not everybody has a big voice out there like Rosie does, for example, and a lot of people listen to her. But what we can do, everybody from home, is literally just start with spreading the awareness. Speak to your family, speak to your friends about the problem. You know, so make people aware of it because most people don't even know that it's a problem. So they don't care if they use plastic bags or not. So that's the number one thing I think everybody can do is just start the awareness. You know, make people aware of the problem. And then obviously we have small things that everybody can do. Um, instead of using a plastic water bottle, which is also another big thing, um, is to use a reusable water bottle, glass preferably, that you can use over and over again instead of use it once, throw it away, use it again, throw it away. Um, the same goes for takeaway meals. Um, instead of, of, of taking the utensils, if you are going to eat at home, please ask them to not supply you with the utensils. You know, So the less you use, the less you have to throw away. So it always goes to basically just being very conscious when you buy something and to look at it. And also to boycott places who use packaging excessively. Sometimes in a supermarket, I almost get a heart attack when I get there and the bananas are wrapped up in plastic and in polystyrene, for example, it already comes in its own container. Why would you wrap it again? You know, so so these small little things. There are quite a few companies out there that are actively um, trying to enforce laws and regulations on these people to stop using the excessive plastics. Um, it's 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 such a big thing that um, at the moment they suspect that there's more microplastics in the ocean than there is plankton which is crazy if you think about it. Um, not only do fish eat it, and then bigger animals eat the fish, or we eat the fish, plastic doesn't go away. So if it's in their stomach, something else eats it, now it's in their stomach, and eventually it gets to us, and we eat. By that time, you know, it's been accumulating for 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 days or years or weeks or whichever way. So it even comes to the point, you know. So it's not those little issues. If you think about the fact that the microplastics in the ocean actually causes the water to go murky, which means that the plants in the ocean can't photosynthesize. And I don't know, Rosie, if you knew this, but up to 70% of the oxygen we breathe comes from plants in the ocean. So if they can't produce the oxygen anymore due to the, 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 the murkiness of the water of the plastic, uh, due to the plastic, 70% of our oxygen will be gone as well. You know, so you can see it's a much bigger problem. Can you come on again and talk about photosynthesis? Photosynthesis, that sounds like a great idea. Yeah, we're talking about it. Um, but we've got a question saying, how do you start recycling? So what is like step one? Because it seems like quite a, a scary thing to be like, I'm going to start recycling. But it's it's a big job. The, big, the biggest thing that you can do is to, first of all, get three different dustbins, for example, and then label the one plastic, label the one glass, and label the one other waste or whichever. Most of the um, the municipalities are getting on board where you can actually recycle from your home. If that's not an option, um, there are quite a few people who actively recycle. So if you literally just Google recycling companies in my area or whichever way or near me, you'll see that these people will actually come to your house and collect. And if not, if you can't find a company like that, many of the major food stores um, 
food chains and all of those places have recycling areas as well. So if you go to a shopping mall, there should be a recycling area where you can do it. Um, but I would say the best thing is to find the best recycle company close by. And they also have um, ideas for people on how to start and what is the best way of doing it. Because you, there are small things as well that you have to look at on, at the bottom. I don't know if you've ever seen, but if you pick up a plastic container and you, there has to be a number on it, and that number indicates on what type of plastic it is and how it should be recycled. So okay. you can even go as far as to separate your plastics into different plastics. But that's, you know, oh. once you get to advanced level of recycling. <laughs> Recycle level 100. Um, exactly. You so, need a lot of XP to get there. Yeah. Um, look at the bamboo. You see, I've got stainless steel. Um, mm -hmm. This one, which comes with the little cleaner, which I find really handy and sweet. And you also get the silicone ones. And then you've got exactly. bamboo. One bought bamboo and then one that we made. Um, that is what. What's better? Where, where do we sit with stainless steel? Uh, stainless steel is, a, is is extremely durable. So the big thing with that is as well, because of the, the, the way that they construct stainless steel, it's very difficult for bacteria or anything to actually attach to it. So that makes it even more hygienic for yourself for personal health reasons. Um, and as I say, it's extremely durable. So I Whereas with the paper ones, you know, paper still has a, a quite a huge environmental impact as well. Um, less so than plastic, but you know, we have bees to make straws now. Um, and the same with the silicone one. Silicone is, is is very much a type of plastic, you know, or close to the, to a type of plastic. So my personal opinion is to stick with the stainless steel or just drink from the glass like a big person does, <laughs> you know, like most adults do. <laughs> and you want to have a milkshake. you got to drink out of the If you drink it from the glass, you get that milk, my moustache and everything, you know, it's like an interactive experience. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't want to pretty backtrack. Um, we'll talk about the ozone layer in a second, because that's also quite important. What's the ozone? We'll get there. But um, let's just have a quick a quick appreciation post, um, but anti-appreciation for paper straws. I hate paper straws. <laughs> I know it's um, good for the dolphins, but when I was in school, <laughs> You're worried about the trees, and now we're just like listless milk paper straws all the time. One, the trees, to oxygen, maybe that's important, and and it's it gets mushy. It gets mushy. That's my personal problem with it: is the mushiness. <laughs> Look, with the, the, the manufacturing of the straws, um, we've for the production of the trees that we use for these types of papers, you know. So, yes, the rainforests are still being destroyed to a horrible extent. Rosie, that's another thing we have to talk about is the rainforests and why they are important. Um, but it's, it's, it's less of an environmental impact than using plastic. Because getting back to the ozone layer as well, even with plastics during the manufacturing process, when we make plastic, we emit a lot of greenhouse gases. Um, this, which means not only the plastic itself destroys the environment, but the process we follow to get to the plastic also destroys the environment. So yeah. it's global influenced or, or accelerated by the use or the production of plastic. Yeah. So see, you, I, you can see that. Yeah, I, I was so, Sorry? when when I got myself a stainless steel straw, I was so happy mm. because I started getting into this terrible mindset where, and it's, it's horrendous, I thought I'd like won the lottery whenever I got a plastic straw because I hated, <laughs> I hated paper yeah. straw. It was like such a treat getting a plastic straw and being able to drink a drink. And then I yeah. now I never feel bad that I care more about oxygen than the dolphins. So now I was like, <laughs> I fix this. So then I got myself yeah. a stainless steel straw and I'm like, okay, that's much better. And we were talking much about the shopping bags. I've got myself a material shopping bag. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm trying because I feel so bad, even like on the go meals, like forget takeaways, it's those quick ones, you know, from the, from the bar, the Woolworths, or um, Mark and Spencer's, it's, it's, it's all plastic. So, you know, exactly. you think isn't even going to decompose what's getting into our food, what are we actually then eating? 
Um, so and what's getting into our air, our water, our food, literally everything we need to stay alive is influenced by the use of especially single-use plastics. Yeah. You know, so, so you made a good point with, uh, with the, the takeaway meals being packaged in plastic as well. So another thing that you can do is when you place a takeaway order is to say that you will bring your own packaging or you'll bring your own plate. Many restaurants now do it where you place a takeaway order and you take your plate with and you go and collect it or your um, Tupperware or whatever you know so so top of the year is full plastic but you're going to reuse it you're not going to use it just once our biggest problem are the ones that you just use once and then throw yeah. it away see i i love getting takeaway coffees which i know you get paper and you get plastic and it's like oh but um, <laughs> if you bring your own cup you actually get a discount on your coffee so we're basically being rewarded to exactly. to say for recycling <laughs> and that's I want to know about the ozone layer. What is that? Okay, so the ozone layer, it's, it's again, it's one that we're going to have to talk about for about another hour. But the ozone layer is basically a protective layer of gases around the Earth. So these gases, it's one of the reasons why life on Earth is possible, is because of the ozone layer. So not only does it protect us from the harmful rays from the sun, but it also keeps the planet warm to some extent because it kind of acts like a little blanket around the world. And it also um, contains all the gases, so the oxygen and all of those things that need to stay close to Earth because we can't produce oxygen and then it just escapes into space. So mm -hmm. this is in gases and it's, and it's even divided into different layers, the ozone layer itself. But it's 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 a, almost like a, you can think about it as a cozy little blanket around the earth, keeping most. So um, that being said, we are damaging the ozone layer as well, which is one of the major reasons for global warming. Sure. So Dela, we're going to have to have the Adela scientist teacher tomorrow on to talk about the hole in the ozone layer. All right, um, Carl, we have run out of time for today, but I do. Think we've got a couple of topics today that we've touched on that you, you're just gonna have to come back. This is, I'm sorry, you're gonna have to come back. I would love to, have to come back and discuss all of these things. Absolutely. So, you've got photosynthesis, the ozone layer. Um, I think there was one one other thing it's like marine life and those kinds of deforestation is a big one. Um, it's a and if there's other questions that viewers, if you would like to chat about or know more about, please message them in we can ask teacher carl basically anything because he knows everything and <laughs> <laughs> and if he doesn't come back again when he's learned her. <laughs> exactly exactly i'll go and do my homework i mean <laughs> so we'll have you on thank you so much for being on teacher carl carl we love thank you so much for having me thank you, <laughs> thank you Rosie. <laughs> Okay, so guys, um, that was the Adelis scientist. He's one of my favorite guests to have on, uh, Teacher Carl. I think he knows everything. Um, but yeah, we'll definitely have him on again. If you have any questions, let us know. I would love to find out, you know, all of these things and learn more about our planet, how it works, even space. Yeah, anything. A anything. Anything at all. The guys. Yeah, we do have one more thing. If you want to learn how to do what we do uh we've actually just released a masterclass on ventriloquism and it's called the five step guide to ventriloquism so we're going to quickly hop to that promo just quick if we can can we i don't know isn't this a good enough promo? i think this is a great promo but you guys actually have to stay tuned. No worries, because we've got the School of Positivity coming up next. And Rosie might just make an appearance. So, guys, thank you for watching. You've been watching Locking Down with Isabella J and Rosie. Stay safe and stay sanitized.
how are you doing? So wonderful to be here again. We're at the School of Positivity on IBM TV every Sunday, and we absolutely love being here. Oh, it's been amazing. How many weeks have we been, we've been doing this for? Oh, uh, well, how many animals have we met at the Kruger? Wow. Uh, Probably about 10. 10? Maybe 11? Can you remember any of them? Because then maybe we can count through all of them. Uh, I remember we did a buffalo. A buffalo. We, we did a rhino. A rhino. Uh, we did a, a hornbill. A hornbill. A, a leopard. A leopard. Um, uh, a lion. A lion. A giraffe. A hippo. Did you say a hippo? hippo? I can't even count There's anymore. So many. There've been so many. We're going to go to Rosie and Isabella's school for arithmetic and grammar. Just so we can figure out how to count properly. Yeah. We but all... also, my memory's going a little bit. That's no. why I can't remember everything. Yeah, so is mine. Sometimes I'm very, very forgetful. But that's okay, I think. It's not I've never good. known you to forget anything. Oh, no, look at you. I try really hard. It's because I write everything down. So that helps me. But I'm excited to get in today's doodle. What are oh, we doing I know. today? I don't know. You're the one that does the doodling. You know? Well, I've got an idea, but you know what I need? What? Some pens and pencils. Oh, brilliant. I'll go and get my pens and pen crayons. Where did I put them? You can't remember? I, I don't know where I put my crayons. Where did I put my pen? Where was the last time you had your crayons? Um, well, if I remembered, I'd probably know where to go, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess that is a bit of a stupid question to ask people when they've lost something. <laughs> what a stupid question. But there's no such thing as stupid questions. Oh, wow. I forgot. Where am I? Okay, I got a better way. I got a, I got a better way. Okay, yeah. We need to retrace your steps of everything you've done today, and maybe something will well, trigger where they are. And I'll remember. Okay, so... Um, before the show, I ate a really big hamburger for lunch. Oh. Mm, it was delicious. It was mm. chicken and it had lettuce and tomato and mayonnaise and it had this beautiful dripping barbecue sauce. It was oh, it was so delicious. See, you remember that? Well. <gasps> okay. What did you do after that? Um, before or after? Because I had a nap afterwards. <laughs> oh. That's probably when all your memories escaped your brain. <laughs> probably. Okay, wait. So before my hamburger, I. I went for a walk to the swimming pool mm -hmm. and then I met my tortoise and I took my tortoise for a walk and my tortoise loves to play fetch so I then threw the stick for my tortoise and before my tortoise came back I started doodling a little bit and then after I did that I went for another walk Whoa. and then I had Why breakfast. Are you, are you Hang on, I'm remembering my whole day. I had, I had breakfast which was scrambled egg on toast and then I... Yeah, I think that I woke up. What did you do while you were waiting for your tortoise to bring back the stick? Uh, doodling. Where was that? Uh, in the garden. Well, yeah. that's where your crayons are, silly. Of course, that's the last time I used my crayons. Well, I know exactly where to go. Okay, you take that. I'll be back now. Hang on two seconds. Uh, memory can be so hard. I wish I could remember a song about memories. The only one that comes to mind is Memories all alone in the moonlight. I have lost my memory. Can't remember the words. I think that's how it goes. Hey, anyway. I got them. I'm so glad we did that. That was such a good memory game. Like I know that we forget things all the time. It's really normal to, but. If we have a memory game that helps us remember things, then we can find our crayons. <laughs> Even for those who've lost their marbles. Yeah. What does that mean? Well, sometimes I hear when you get really old, you lose your marbles. Oh. So you have to play those games to find them again. Well, I'm not very old and I have to play that game. So the game is perfect for everybody. Everybody, any age. <laughs> okay, we need to get doodling. What have you got up your sleeve today for us? Well, I've actually got an animal that is probably probably the best rememberer out of all animals. You mean it's got a really good memory? That's what I said. Oh, I'm excited, guys. It's time to doodle the shapes. So get your crowns, get your pens, and let's get doodling.
amazing. I love the way you color in action, Tam. Do you? You always give them pink uh, toenails. You're like a manicurist. I am, right? I really love elephants. I think they're so big and so beautiful. And I love how we can do it with shapes. Look at this. They're so amazing. I love <laughs> elephants. I've seen elephants so many times in the wild. They're so amazing. We are so lucky to live in South Africa and basically have all these magnificent creatures on our doorsteps. We get to see elephants quite often, actually. Sure do. This one time, I went to a, a, a waterfall, Water yeah, and there was a whole bunch of elephants there, and they were bathing, and they were splashing each other with water, and then the matriarch, who's like the queen of, uh, of the herd, yeah. right, she just blew her trumpet, and they all got out of the water, and then she had a bath, and they had their backs to her, you know, wow. because they gave the queen her privacy and they also stood around to protect her. While she was bathing herself. Which makes me think she was protecting them while they were bathing. Definitely. Amazing. Oh, and you know that they have the longest memory span of every of any animal. They can yes. remember things that happened 20 years ago. And there's so many beautiful stories of, of these elephants remembering special people in their lives who've helped them. And they can get really old as well. I think the oldest uh, elephant on record is about 86 years yeah. old. That's really old. They're so big and beautiful. And we just praise them for their, ma their majestic ways. <laughs> Reminds me actually of a, a character we met recently. Yeah. Oh, you're talking about Elle. I'm talking about Elle. <laughs> <laughs> Elle. She's wonderful. She's really old though, but wow. She's our Kruger Critter for today. Let's go meet her. Let's go meet her. Can't wait. With the Kruger, Kruger Critters. Fantastical creatures await us in Africa. I hope you remember to bring your own camera, because we're about to meet the wildest of critters. Some might even give you the jitters. A bunch of man-eating, veggie-snacking beasts with delightful stories for all to feast. Don't forget to doodle your pictures. While we share their stories, they'll have you in stitches. Some are quirky and totally misjudged, but please don't hold a grudge. Just join us on our adventures that are wild and free, learning all about the animals that we meet. These critters that live under the African sun have found a place in my heart, one by one. I am the world's largest land mammal, four times as large as the humpy camel. I weigh a couple of beautiful tons, six to be precise, and I'm full of fun. She spends her days out in the savanna, using her big feet as a natural hammer. Crushing and stamping the ground below, she has an idea of how things should flow. I use my large and powerful trunk to uproot trees or break off a chunk. With my bountiful big grey build, I will even destroy a termite hill. <laughs> I live a long life, almost as long as you, up to 60, oh, 70 years. Can you believe that's true? She has a memory that spans many years, and she has the largest of all animal ears. Although her landscaping art is a fail, she has the cutest tiny elephant tail. <coughs> Short and sweet, but she's something to be seen. Guess who I have in studio? Oh, hello, fans of IBM.TV and art fans, art lovers. Love being here. Oh, so good to have you here. I love it when you come and visit us. You always have exciting stories to tell us, and you're always on really exciting adventures too. Oh, yes. I have taken a break from my art. For the meantime. Really? Yes, I thought I would educate myself in some new art. Well, well, what kind of art is that? Well, have you ever heard of a company called Udemy? 
No. Well, you can learn just about anything on Udemy. Really? You can. You can study anything. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, well, what are you studying on Udemy? Well, you know I'm a bit of a fan of uh, Isabella and Rosie. Yes, mm -hmm. we all know you fancy Rosie. Well, they have just released a new course on Udemy for what? ventriloquism. Oh, wow. So basically, how to make Rosie come to life? Basically, well, it's, it's how to how to make one person into two people. So I would like a little helper of my own. Oh wow! So 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 you want someone like Isabella? Is that yes, that? of course. I would love an Isabella that I could just you know sit with and chat with. That sounds so exciting. Well. I know I've been pretending that I don't know what you're talking about, Artie, but I actually do because I have something planned for you. For me? Mm -hmm. What are your plans? I know you've been working really, really hard. So I thought maybe it's time you meet your teachers. Meet my teachers? Yeah. Are you talking about my art teacher? Mm -hmm. I, I know the no. dude very well. No, no, not the dude. Rosie and Isabella. What do you mean meet them? One moment, please. Was something Rosie. supposed to happen? Isabella! Hello! Oh, oh, oh. oh my! I'm so unprepared for you to tell me! No, don't worry. Isabella and Rosie are never really prepared either. No, it's we not do the whole thing. How are you, Arnie? Hello, Tam! Hi, how are you, Rosie? Oh, I'm so good. I'm so excited to see you. I, I'm such a big fan of your show. Oh, we are such big fans of you two as well. We are so excited to have you with us. Special oh. Arnie. Hello, well, Arnie. Well, I'm a little nervous. You see, I've been doing your course on Udemy, but now oh. you're actually talking back to me. I want to give all of my students the attention they deserve. Hey! Yeah! <laughs> and how are you doing, Isabella? Oh, I'm good. I was actually, I was inspired by your guru critters and I got my own little elephant out. Oh, wow. Oh, she is beautiful. Wow, we. Oh, and she's yeah. gold. Is she, is she from India? No, no. She's actually from Singapore. Oh, wow. Beautiful. Little, big in Singapore, too. And it's a little trinket box. Oh, and a beautiful gold elephant. Oh, we love it. That's so beautiful. Beautiful. Oh. So, so I was going to Sorry, we spoke oh. over It's this online stuff. Hate it. And we spoke. What did we say? <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We're all, all of us, all four of us are starstruck right now because we've been <laughs> watching your show for the last 11 weeks and we are so in love with everything you're doing. I love it. Beauty. And we love what Artie's doing at the moment and we love the fact that you have your own online course. You do. Oh, I do. It's pretty cool. And we think that everybody watching IBM.TV should be watching it, joining in, and learning how to make Rosies and Arties come to life. Wow. It's an amazing process. And, and Tan, it's only yes. five steps. Only five steps to be able to do that. I'm on step one still. Oh, wow. Well, I know. Can you show us your intro video so we can get a little bit more information about what you do and then Artie's going to tell you what he's been doing. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Let's chill. Okay. Let's, let's do it. Let's start it. Hi, I'm Rosie and this is Isabella Jane. Do you want to learn ventriloquism? Well, because you can. Bella, isn't ventriloquism hard? Well, Rosie, I've broken ventriloquism down into five practical and easy steps, and we even get to make our own sock puppet. <gasps> wow! Della, did you know that I'm a fantastic ventriloquist? You are? Yeah, I am. Rosie, you're really good. Do you know why? Why? Well, I did the five-step 
guide to ventriloquism. Well then, you guys should do it too. Yeah, do it. Do it. Do it. That's exactly what I'm doing! You're doing it! So so where about are you? What is what is the process? What's happening? Why don't you speak to Rosie for a bit? Because oh, you want well, to... uh, Rosie, I was wondering, uh, can anyone do your course even if they're still in lockdown? Anyone can do it! It's for all ages, all skill levels, and it's a lot of fun. It really is a lot of fun, and it's quite informative. I mean, I'm really, really good. So you don't need to go to a building and be sanitized to do it? It's all online in the safety of your own home. It's a once-off payment and you can do it over and over again so you don't have to remember the steps the first time round. You can go back, you can contact me, you can ask questions. We can even arrange Zoom lessons if you need some extra help with any other steps. That's, That's cool. amazing. I love the fact that you can always go back because I have a really bad memory sometimes, as you guys have noticed. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, but the fact that we can go back over and over again to be reminded of the steps is so important. So, yeah. I have a question for you, Rosie. Yeah, Artie. So I have a sock, and uh, what do I do with it next? Because it's interesting sock. It's, it's quite a lovely sock, I think, and I can make it move like this. Oh, hello, Rosie. What do you think of my sock voice? Hello, sock. Well, it definitely doesn't suck so far. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. why you're a medium. It, you know, you, all you really need to do the course is make a sock puppet because you don't even have to buy a puppet. You can literally use an old sock, give it two little eyes with some buttons and some hair. We used feathers. So in the course, we actually do a step-by-step -step guide to making your own sock puppet. Wow, that is amazing. Well, Rosie is definitely no sock. <laughs> She's far no, too beautiful. Me, Say what? Say what? Oh my goodness, I said neither are you. You know oh. the sh No, I've been compared to many other things, but not a sock. <laughs> so, I wanted to ask a question quickly. Is, can you be anywhere in the world and do this course as well? Yes, it's anywhere in the world. And Udemy.com is so cool that you can buy it in your own currency. That's brilliant. So none of us have any excuses not to be able to do what you do with Rosie, right? Because you're pretty fantastic, the two Thank of you. Thank you. Just and me. you two have done so many magical things around the world. You've performed so many awesome shows. You're like... Celebrities. Jaw-dropping celebrities. Thank you. It's all me. Yeah. It's, it is. You are definitely a showstopper. Definitely. So I, I would love to see a little bit of the stuff that you guys have gotten up to so that all of our viewers can see just who's teaching them because you guys are like real professionals, right? Amazing. Well, in our introduction to our Udemy course, we did show a little bit of what we did. Can we watch it? I would love everyone to see how magnificent you are. Okay. <laughs> Are you ready for this? Born ready. Are you interested in ventriloquism? Or do you yep. want to be a ventriloquist? You're in the right place. I'm Isabella Jane and I'm a singer and ventriloquist from South Africa. Rosie, do you even know what DJ stands for? Yeah. What? The judge. <laughs> I'm Carrie. Sing. Let it go. Let it go. It's coming back to haunt us. I want you back. I want you back. I just learned this dance like half an hour ago. I've been a professional. <laughs> and for the half decade before that, I was teaching myself how to do it. So I've been doing ventriloquism for 10 years, which is basically half of my life. 
From the age of 16, I was traveling around the world doing major shows, including coming second in South Africa's Got Talent. What I would love to do now is impart some of that knowledge, the tips and tricks that I've learned to you. We'll be looking at all things ventriloquism. Yeah. Oh, there wow. you go. Look how Ooh. still she is. <laughs> That's probably also part of the course. Look at me. <laughs> you too. You spread so much joy and love around the world. It is so beautiful. Oh, absolutely yeah. beautiful. And I think everyone should join in and do what you do. Amazing. That would be amazing. And now where can we find you? What is the address? What is the name of your, your course? Put it all out there for us so that we can go and find it ourselves. Well, it's called the Five Step Guide to Ventriloquism. It is on udemy.com. The best and easiest way to find it is simply to go onto my Instagram page or my Facebook page and all the links are there. It takes you directly to the course, which is a little bit easier than doing like a couple of steps. Um, yeah, rather put things into five easy steps. Like the high step guide to ventriloquism. Oh, <laughs> exactly. Beautiful. And I, I'm, I'm excited to see what Artie does with it too. And, and you really are a big role, mo role model. Role model? Whoop. A big role model too. <laughs> Thank you. She, she, she is quite little, but she's about your size too. Yeah. Rosie, I, what is the size of you and me? Pardon? We're similar size, me and Artie. Yes, you're, you're, you're very compact. Yes, we could possibly, uh, you know, dance together even. Oh, well, maybe one day we'll be able to arrange something like that. But for now, thank you for being on our show. You have taken our breath away. It's so awesome to have you with us. And we can't wait to see what you have next lined up for us. Oh, well, thank you for having us. We're like the biggest fans. Yeah, I love you guys. Uh, Artie. So thanks for having us on. Only a pleasure, and we'll see you soon. Absolutely. We'll see you same time, same place next week. Bye. 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 Oh, uh, yes, we're still on. <laughs> yeah, they're still watching. Uh, how, how do you feel? Oh. I was so nervous that entire interview. Oh, she's so beautiful. Her long blonde hair, her dress that's pink of hue. Do you know the intro song? Uh, word for word. Wow. You are a big fan, aren't you? Rosie is my puppet pal. Her hair is straight and yellow. <laughs> I love it. So guys, this is an amazing course for you to do. Go on to udemy.com or to Isabella and Rosie's Instagram page, click on the link and you'll be able to learn the five steps to... Ventriloquism! Okay, you need to go because we've got to doodle again. I got so excited we got over time again. This happens every single time. All right, Saturday. I'm going, I'm going. Okay, off you go. Bye! <laughs> okay, that was wonderful. It's just, I love the energy of the show. I love how we share the space together. IBM TV is really awesome and it's just good news feel good, everything is wonderful. Now, I would love to have shown you the doodle with shapes again, but I seem to have done something funny on my computer, so it doesn't want to show, but I'm going to show you this picture, so you can take one last look before we say goodbye. So that's the dude's beautiful elephant. They've got a big circle, Ah, there's a big circle over there. There's a big triangle over. I'm going backwards over there. I can't do this. Another little circle. A big long triangle. I can't do it. It's upside down. But can you see all the shapes? <laughs> anyway, guys. Dude, come on. Hey, what's happening? I can't get our video to show again. So I was trying to show everybody the shapes. Oh, I'll point them out for you. It's just a circle for the head, okay. a circle for the body, yeah. a triangle for the ear, yeah. and then you make this beautiful trunk, and then these two rectangles for the legs. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. You got it. I love it. Oh, guys, it's always so wonderful to be on the show with you and to share this time and space with you. I've totally forgotten where I was, because usually when we show the video, then we get to retrace the elephant, but I can't remember how. 
Oh, well, <laughs> I'm sure uh, some of the foods that help with memory could help you. Oh, well, what are those? I think it's like blueberries are good for your memory. Nuts. Nuts are good for your memory. Leafy greens. But oh, what I'm remembering because I eat this all the time. Well, there you go. And remember, you can always retrace your steps if you forget something. Always go backwards. And remember, knowing facts is always better than knowing fear. <laughs> always, guys. So wonderful to be with you today, and we'll see you next Sunday, same time, same place. Bye! Bye. 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 Oh, apparently we need to exit by ourselves. See, let's have a look. There, that one, that one. There we go. Okay, okay. bye. bye.